So hi, we're at Under the Radar Conference today in Mountain View, California, and I'm with Rob Bailey, CEO of Datasift. Hi, how are you? Very nice to meet you. <laughs> Good to meet you. So um, tell me a little bit about Datasift, and especially um, you're here presenting today, why you're at Under the Radar Conference, and a little bit more about your company. Sure. So what, uh, I'll explain a little bit of the background first. Please. What we're finding uh, when we talk to CIOs and CTOs of Fortune 500 companies and even sort of smaller, fast growth, mid-sized companies, um, one of the top three or four things that is on uh, a CTO or CIO's agenda right now is what to do about this absolute explosion in social data right now. Uh, so we're finding a few things are coming together, which is, first of all, an explosion of data being created in the social web by consumers uh, and businesses. Uh, you have uh, Facebook now has over 900 million users. LinkedIn has over 150 million users. WordPress, depending on how you count it, you know, over 50 or 100 million uh, blogs potentially or pages mm -hmm. that are being created using um, automatics uh, technology. And the list just goes on and on. Uh, the list just goes on and on. Um, so what we're finding is an explosion of, of data. Um, consumers are spending as much as 20% of their time online on social networks. So it's really important to know what they're doing there. Um, and what happens on social networks can be very impactful on companies. People go on to social networks like Twitter and Facebook and such to complain about businesses, to talk about products that they like, um, to share news articles about companies. And so it's, it, there's, a, there's a huge amount of activity going on on the social web. Um, it's really overwhelming for the average company to, to manage, but yet at the same time, it's really important to be interacting with that information. Absolutely. So that's usually the kind of the situation that we find CTOs and CIOs with. Mm -hmm. um, so we provide a social data platform where we aggregate all of these different social mm -hmm. data sources together, clean them, normalize them, uh, and then provide them back out uh, through an API uh, with a very powerful, very extensive set of tools that help uh, the builders of different technology applications get more value from that data. Give me an example who would, uh, would access your API. Sure. So I, I think probably the first, uh, the first sort of group of companies that has is, that is, uh, moved really aggressively with us are social media monitoring companies Yeah. Um, that actually provide that intelligence and analytics layer out to uh, companies. So for example, NetBase, which is one of the leading social media monitoring companies, mm -hmm. switched over to us a few months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a great company, have a really long list of customers, including they announced a, nation, uh, sorry, a, a global partnership with SAP. Um, they provide social analytics software out to their customers, but it sort of said, you know, we're, we sp we're having all these engineers spending all this time cleaning and normalizing data, which is not really giving us any competitive advantage. We'd rather reallocate those engineers to building out the application. So we'd love for you to take care of the really kind of hard, heavy, messy stuff around preparing this, in, this social data. So that's what we do. Okay. So that would be one example. Another one, if you'd like. Mm hmm uh, news organizations. Uh, so we've closed deals with, I think, something like three of the, f of the four top news organizations in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, we're finding that... Like? I can't say. Okay. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> um, okay. So we're finding that um, news is really being revolutionized right now by what's going on on social. Obviously. Um, social is, is frequently the first place where news stories arise. Yeah. When I think about some of the m most important news stories that I heard about in the past few years, whether it was the killing of, of Osama bin Laden or uh, yeah, yeah. the death mm. of Whitney Houston, I mm. first heard about it actually on Twitter. Um, so the social web has become a great source of identifying emerging news stories, um, but then also tracking how those stories are diffused and what is important within those stories. So we're finding that the social web is really revolutionizing uh, what's going on in news, news collection, analysis, and how articles are being published and then tracked with follow-on stories. Mm -hmm. So we're helping these news organizations do yeah. have a lot more meaning uh, from I them. got that. I got, uh. A great example would be when a story breaks, for example, Apple's quarterly earnings or something like that, um, you're able to see a much broader picture of what's going on in the social web and what people are saying about a particular news story and what different groups are actually saying about the news story. And one of the really interesting ones that I've seen lately has been the rise of using social to optimize how stories are written. So um, when a story, especially stories, on a, is ongoing, uh, a news organization can now actually see what people are tweeting, for example, on Twitter about a particular story, 
and then kind of tailor their stories to what's important. Mm -hmm. Almost reminds me a little bit to Storyfy now as well. We're kind yeah. of integrating certain certain aspects. Is that maybe a company you want to partner with at some point? Yeah, or? absolutely. I mean, it just comes to my mind, right? Yeah. It's not <laughs> a kind of brainstorming, but uh, yeah, it goes in that direction. Yeah, no, we're seeing just an explosion of just fascinating companies in a variety of different spaces mm -hmm. around social data. Um, what we want to do is enable them to just focus on you know building the application layer. And we focus on doing the really hard, uh, sort of messy stuff that no one wants to do, which is the platform layer. Yeah, understood. Uh, what's your business model? So we're a uh, cloud SaaS business. We mm -hmm. charge monthly subscriptions, which are a mm -hmm. combination of licensing fees for the different data types that we provide, as well as processing fees of, um, you know, actually... What's the processing fee? Not, not how much, what do you mean with it? Sure. So typically the way it would work is uh, you might, let's say you wanted to track a story about Apple. Um, and you, you set up a filter on our platform to actually track everything, all the mentions around Apple. Mm -hmm. um, the way you'd be charged is a combination of the cost of the individual tweets generated by uh, that story, uh, as well as the actual sort of computer processing to operate those filters. Mm -hmm. So essentially, the more complicated a filter, the more processing power is used to operate that filter, and therefore it becomes slightly more expensive. Okay, excellent. So what do you want to get out of Under the Radar Conference while you're here? We're honored to be a part of the uh, under, radar, under the Radar Conference today. There's really a, a very impressive list of companies. Mm -hmm. We're honored to be Agreed. one of them. Mm -hmm. um, what we're looking to do is continue to evangelize uh, the message about social data uh, in the enterprise and also identify particular customers. Uh, we were actually here yesterday for some warm-up sessions and have already met uh, a lot of great potential customers. Excellent. Well, thank you so much uh, for these insights and hope you're having a great show. Rest, uh, rest of the day. Thank you. Take care. Talk with you.